guys, Strike here, welcome back to Disco Elysium. Now, in the last one, we discussed the essence of reality and stole money from an old lady. And now, it is time to go and- uh, uh, what, you want to talk again? Little girl, what the hell's going on? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? You keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? I swear we've already- yeah, we've already spoke about this. What the hell? Yes, I know, she's an Azoni whore or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. You I mean Joyce? On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Uh, hold on. What's a, a Zoni? It's where they grow whores like her. And they're whore men. Why all the negativity? We got a crush on her, aching for an opportunity to defend her honor. Hmm. Well, that's all she really has to say. What are you doing to the wall? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what do you want to write? We've we've already fucking done all this, haven't we? So I have an op I have an opinion. I love public art. I think we've already spoke about this. It's just been a few days since I played the game. I'm uh, not entirely remembering what everything looks like, but I do remember that in the last one. Well, wait, 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 wait. I've got a paintbrush now, right? I just need to steal some motor oil from somewhere. I have no idea how to do that or why or what the fuck. But, uh, yeah, let's get to it. I also know that we need to get ourselves a, uh, like, ammonia sorts or something from the gardener once it rolls around to tomorrow. I, did I ever speak to you? Who are you? Hello? Hear the distant squall of seabirds. Better ma- what? Uh, mouth- what's from me, boy? <laughs> okay, yeah, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to worry about you. We don't want to bother with you. You are an absolute disaster, and you know it. What do we got over here? A splatter of bullet holes lines the wall. The sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. Okay. Look closer first. The fading marks are too degraded to draw any forensic conclusions. There's chips in the sandstone. They look pretty ancient. Hey, Kim, look. Bullet holes. Where? What did, what I meant? Where? He looks around. Points the chips in the wall. Someone has been shot! We're cops! We should solve it! There? Th he looks to the wall. Those are old. Oh, you mean like from the revolution? Yes, the one that happened half a century ago. He blinks. Those bullets were fired during the revolution and do not warrant an investigation by officers of civil law. Okay, well, uh, tell me more about this revolution. Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Should we go? Yeah, all right, but I mean, thanks for the XP. XP for teaching me literally nothing. Don't really know why that happened, but I'm not going to complain. Hmm. Well, that's all we've got off to that side, huh? I wonder if it will let me steal his motor oil, or if I have to buy that from somewhere. Hello? Motor oil? Yeah, okay, I can't do that. Um... Well, what I would like to do is go in and pay my debts and everything and have everything be alright. But I would also... Wait, how do I even get around there? I know there's a way. I know that there's that, uh, spooky sneaky secret car. How, the old lady is still up? Jesus Christ. Still reminiscing, girl? Is that screen tearing? How the fuck is that even happening on a game like this? Hello. Yeah, yeah, look in the window. Uh... What about the back seat? But I could have sworn this is this was the truck we were going to ins investigate. The racist asshole isn't still around. What? I actually have to like, hello, sir. Do you, do, do you mind if I, you know, just break into your, into your truck a little bit here and bust you for all the fucking drug? Really? We have to ask permission to do that. Sure. Hello, lady. Can I talk to you now that it's the middle of the night? Uh, I guess I'll snap my if fingers in front of her face. You may need to be more forceful. You didn't tell me- you told me not to talk to her last time. Guess we'll do it again. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis. You've jolted her back to reality. Hmm. smile on her face has disappeared. Replaced by the wary aspect of a cornered beast. Uh... Are you alright, ma'am? You were out. Never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in the traffic jam. In the 50s. She adds with contempt. Uh, 
Where else would you be then? Back in Mefke, during the time of the revolution, the sidewalks and coffees are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new boy there, picture starring Gabriel Buendierro. Oh, the voice acting's ropey, isn't it? But oh well, there's just no emotion in it. it. It's like you found a random old lady who's never seen a computer before and asked her to read some lines. Until you come along, that is. For the magical screen games. Uh, the look she gives you is accusatory. It didn't fucking sound accusatory. Ah. Uh, who's Gabriel Buenguerra? This is Gabriel Buenguerra. She shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. He's a strikingly handsome man. Oh, sorry. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide-brimmed wide hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick. And his, his is... What? His is jaw. God. How have they not fixed this yet? His jaw is the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of the <coughs> day. He had used it to faint in the aisles of the cinema whenever he came on the screen. And a schoolboy used to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. In all likelihood, it's a world that only ever existed in her mind. Damn. So I take it you're in Mesca when you were young. Someone was. She nods as though her meaning were perfectly clear. Ah, uh, it's someone. Are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What she gets gruff does suddenly. It make if it's me or not? They are beautiful. That is all that matters, beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know. All of this. She looks around. What the fuck? What? <laughs> what the hell is going on? She seems to derive some bit of pleasure from this strange thought. As if the past will one day wipe the present away. Like a tidal wave approaching. But what does she mean, someone's memories? It, it, she's making it sound like she fucking murdered someone and sucked out their brains. You goddamn drowsy. Okay, uh, sorry to interrupt your dreaming, man. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, low man. It was early spring, and the mine behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Meters. Was cold. Her eyes narrow as she appears to take your measure. Like you people were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution. In that case, it was a golden age. The Republic of Mesca is a massive confederation on the Isola of Mundi, the world's largest state by territory. Petro state, a constitu constitutional monarchy, there we go. And as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. That doesn't sound like much of a golden age, old lady. Right, I have some other questions for you. Uh, police Why questions. Not, it's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos, and knickknacks line the dashboard. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she's in... Maybe she was at the hanging somehow. Hmm. True, but I can't really ask that just yet. It seems a little too weird. You seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. Brilliant. Uh, well, before I came, you seemed... Away. She's just a distracted old woman. Maybe we should let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's the smuggler. You hear that, law man? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Hmm. Wait. Why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. He doesn't want your frail mind getting caught up in something... here. Something unconnected to the case. But connected this woman... Connected this woman tuning out like that? What the fuck does that mean? Should you drive a lorry if you get like that? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best camioneers, camioneers around. I drive routes no one else will. What routes? Uh, Lomonosnov, Lomono, Lomonosov land. Udaknyaya, Zemilia. Welcome to the series where I just butcher absolutely every word in the fucking language. The Western Plain. She nods and closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. The trans Magistr magi Magistral, U41A, as her striders do Mirador. All the good ones, the deep trenches where bluebirds fly. She opens her eyes again and shudders. Well, I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You should take better care of yourself. Cool, ride until you're dust, sister. Let's go with that. 
I don't know what that means. She breathes out. I already am dust. I still don't really understand this old Boidero Gabriel Buengre Buengaro thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boidero, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. A Boidero, or Boer for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magri Magrit. Uh, yeah. The great steppes of the northern Mesca. People like Manana at the, at the gates have turned it into an ideology of sorts. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boidero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Of course not. Boidero has returned from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as, as he and his beloved- fuck me- as he and his beloved are walking along the River Magritte, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. I think I see where this is going. So the Bardero strangles his beloved and throws a body in the Magritte and rides off because the Western Plain is calling to him. Oh my god, a beautiful song? That's not where I thought that was going. You have to understand, a true Bardero needs the whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it was, what it meant to love a Bordero. He murdered her, you fucking psycho! What if to truly love a Bordero is to float lifeless downstream? Well, show me the soles of your boots. Now, what do you want with an old woman's boots, Serife? Ah. It's important for police business, ma'am. She raises her boot, slowly and with contempt. I'm starting to think she let me get back to Gabriel Buengaro. You're no Gabriel. She's wearing sturdy worker's boots made from black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is made of leather. Now the other one, please. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Frank Candiero. Now there was a real man. There was no aberration in the pattern you could see. She puts her foot down. Moreover, the boots were size 37. Oh, tiny. Okay. But too many discrepancies in all of this. Another discrepancy, although not boot-related, is the coronation of his innocence, Frank Nero, uh, which happened 500 years ago. Hmm. She's not old soul. These are not the boots that made the prince. Actually, let's ask that first. It was. She shrugs. And then it was no more. And I no longer hold. And I was no longer holding my father's hand. It was no longer descending into the stairs in Rael. The crowd had gone silent. Perhaps there was another Zirife who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Or perhaps it was one of the others in this carnival, I don't remember. As she says, carnival, she gestures to the empty square, with the statue and the machines. Uh, she's not odd soul, Kim. These are not the boots that made the prince. He takes quick note. I could have told you from just from that from just from looking at them. Her size is 37. Feet of a little girl, she smiles. They will fit well on the pedals. Hmm. So what are you hauling? Diamonds. Diamonds? Really? Of course not, she says grinning. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? Yeah, whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. She smiles a careless smile. Besides... I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. Hmm. What if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, lawman. What? What? You want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand Herman can fuck me. Herman the Gilda Dildo. Herman the Dildo. Bad hand Herman the Dildo. Bad hand. What the hell is going on? Strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. I mean, it's true. Some people like being strangled. Each their own, as long as they don't die. Hey, right. you seem to look like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. What do I need drugs for, lawman? What I see, what I feel. Great adversary. No drugs can compare. Hmm. The adversary, huh? Yes, there's a protagonista. She gestures to the intersection. And an adversario. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hall. Those epithets are familiar somehow. Great adversary, the great unrest. Hmm. 
That's not really what I was getting at. And what were you getting at? This line of question is going nowhere. Try harder! Maybe if she thought you're corrupt? Hmm. Everett sent me. Who the fuck is Everett? The, uh, the union boss? Ah, and what do I care about the union boss? He's not Gabriel. He's not Frank Condiero. He's not even Herman the Dildo the Hand. What the hell's going on? Okay, well, let me put this another way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? I don't think she is. Almost definitely not. Let's change the subject. Plus, I can get back to it another time. Good. I don't care about drugs. Little molecules, they're nothing. She glances wistfully at the photo. It's definitely not her, surely. Thank you for now. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesquite. Her voice trails off. Well, we got places to be. People to bone. In fact, I don't think we do. I think I've genuinely, potentially, visited absolutely everything. And you know what scares me? I wanted to find this fucking drug smuggler as quickly as I could, because I don't know how much longer these fucking vehicles are going to stay here. Yes. Because we know they're going to be, uh, they're going to be taken away quite soon, right? Or, or the, the drawbridge is going to have to be lifted again. I feel like maybe I should have done that on the first day, but we didn't fucking manage it. Oh, God. I'm going to put away my, uh, I'm going to put away my torch now. Hasn't really been a moment where we need it. It's like, ooh, it'll show up extra things. And showing up any fucking thing. Fuck you. Uh, let's get our pliers back out, because that isn't absolutely terrifying. Let's pull out everyone's teeth. Uh, everyone's gone except these- Okay, you're a terrifying couple, aren't you? Alright, talk to me, buddy. Ooh. Can I help you? No. Hello. Damn, I want to get in there. We need to be able to break into that fucking door. So about that money I owe. I have your money. It glares at you suspiciously. Well? Ah. Uh, Here's 130 real. <laughs> Slam the bills down on the counter. Hope you choke on it. Oh, well, here it is. Sorry for the trouble. Let's apologize. 70 XP. Fuck yeah. Um, great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your, pay your nightly bill in advance, starting tomorrow. I don't know if I can do that. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you're- now that you have money, he really just wants to make sure you're not angry with him. I'll unlock your ele the, the electronic log to your room. He taps his foot against a metal box installed at the back of the bar counter. All the dogs lock automatically at 9 o'clock. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. He opens his- oh, Kim opens his wallet? Oh yeah, I'll take a room here too. Of course. He takes the m money and hands him a- what? He takes the money and hands him a key ring. Oh, always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do with it for you? I need a drink. Do I have a shake? Oh, f dude, we're friends now. Oh my god, I gave you your damn money. Feel like you've given me a hint previously, but it's not connecting. <laughs> oh man, um... I really want to get into the door. Fuck it. Okay. Um, well, let's level up. What do we want to level up? I really don't know. I want to start becoming an expert in things rather than damage controlling in the things we suck at. So, maybe I'll bring authority back up to fight. That's damage control again, dude. What are you talking about? Um, what's rhetoric like? It means we're hard-headed as hell. And no one can change our mind, which I don't necessarily want. Uh, what does this do? Blinded by my own brilliance. Yes, let's not do that. Uh, drama, though. No bouts of paranoia. No, the truth is a vanity. Okay, well, we don't want that. Inland Empire, I kind of like. I really like Shivers, though. Can I level up? Oh, it's just caps. Why? Why? Okay, then let's upgrade Suggestion. It's, uh, it's our special skill. I don't care how slimy we are. Let's absolutely take that. Uh, goodbye, sir. 
I'm gonna make my way upstairs. We still don't have a a karaoke song, which is a shame. Hell, I'd love to run around more, to be honest. I'd love to explore more, but I feel like this is the time where I'm supposed to go to sleep. Because everyone's gone. I've explored everywhere, as far as I know, or at least everywhere that's accessible right now. And we ain't finished just yet, so can I knock on your door at 2 a.m.? You're a horrible person, me. That's gonna terrify her in the middle of the night, but oh well. All right, well, let's, uh, Kim. Kim, do you wanna... Do you wanna not come in my room? You creepy bastard. Ah, there we go. It's the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. Yeah, you got it, man. Let's go. I wonder if I didn't get my shoe here, I would have just been walking around all day with one shoe. That would have been the most professional thing I've ever done. Probably would have been looked more professional not to wear shoes and just claim it's a religious choice. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to traffic hum and then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. I was thinking I didn't know he smoked, so let's talk. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Ah. Uh, I don't want to be a smoker. Right then, debrief. Yes, he pulls on the cigarette. It's been a long and eventful day. Alright, well, how do you think today went? Well, you were so hungover that you couldn't keep it down when we approached the hanged man, so we didn't even expect the body. But we performed a thorough search of the premises of the crime scene. That's great. Though you really dropped the ball on expecting the body, he doesn't want you to feel too discouraged. Probably out of fear that you'll just give up and keep drinking. Ah, uh, I generally prefer to start with searching the scene and then move on to dealing with the dead bodies. It's not my job to evaluate your methodology, officer. I'm just going through the facts. As for the interviews, we conducted an interview with Everard Clare. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. He's not saying much on the matter because he thinks you could have got more from Everard. Well, I'm sure I can get him to tell us more. But I also helped you, how should I say, remember your name. That's a relief. Uh, I don't know how I feel about my name, actually. That's normal. It's best not to give it too much thought. We tried to interview the Wild Pines rep, but she asked us to do something for her first. Fine, so be it. He purses his lips. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that standard Precinct 41 practice? Yeah, it's part of the jam rock shuffle. I don't like to waste my time, you know. My mind moves fast, so the rest of me has to keep up. Uh... Aww! Or we could raise money for charity. He nods thoughtfully, tapping his finger on his cigarette. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those heels. <laughs> he looks at your snakeskin shoes and smiles suddenly. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Those are the orange. So, uh, what are our powers exactly? The RCM. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers... What? The power officers? Sure. Of Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most, ah, oh, frequently, is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses, in accordance with a more... with an interdepartmental schedule. Uh... 1,000? Why not more? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We're not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Revachol. Wouldn't that be an easy power to... abuse? Yes, although indirectly. The citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. He frowns. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, well, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a, si a station called Slip. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Wait, so how can you be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who do show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer- Those who don't show up have become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. 
It's about pro it's about power protection projection, sorry. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. When power calls you, you come. But power itself is a fragile trick of perception. I see, and if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are uh, expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we're permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Wait, so if I kill someone while on duty... You have to supply compelling evidence so why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly, by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It's hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to the coalition government courts in Quoron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. He taps on his coat pocket, where he keeps his notes. And it's the coalition government that makes all these rules. Oh, fuck open my fucking windows. Uh, and the moral intent more broadly, but yes. His gaze is absolutely fixed on the window below that just went dark. Hmm. The moral intent? What is that? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. He pulls on his cigarette. <sighs> you know who they are? They run this place after the revolution failed. If I didn't know, how would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the Real Belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, the EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. EPIS. <sighs> Next generation of porn. Okay, what do they believe in? What do they believe in? The DeLoreans. They believe that they can. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence, Dolores de Four, D Dolores Day, four centuries ago. Others say they're just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores. Well, what's the, what is that symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. The motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to that what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and uh usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Well, who was Dolores Day? A historic figure, uh, the author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. Well, what do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And he looks at the city below. It doesn't look like that's about to happen. It's more than that. There's a kind of affection in him. You like the moral intern? Yes, I did. When I was younger, in my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky, he quotes. They're not all that bad. That's another let motif associated with moralism. Okay. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. He thinks, then changes his mind. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. I have an opinion on the moral intern. Do you? Lieutenant arches his brow, then pulls on his cigarette. It's a slim white thing in his fingers. Okay, thank you for describing what a cigarette is, game. I'm sure we all needed that. To all the babies out there watching who have never seen one. Right, things are bad out here, points the city. We need them here, giving us the right to police Revachol, or... Hmm... Oh my god, immigrants, liberal kits, fucking men are turning into women? Jesus! No! Uh... They've done an awful job here. Have you seen the place? This isn't humanism. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the MI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Actually, vigilantes is okay with me. And you will adore Martinez. For many of these people, the Union especially, vigilantes is precisely what we are. Personally, 
I don't enjoy it much. He looks at the roundabout. Say nothing. Stare off into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. An aerostatic passes overhead. The whiskers of floodlights on the ground below. Kitsuragi's glasses light up as he looks to the sky. Two glowing circles. Finally, he pulls on the cigarette and says, They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock and the GRAH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs. To the union. To the company. To not daring to come in more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two precincts. And in Jamrock and the GRIH. He looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument cutting into the night sky and says, We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are, he shakes his head. We are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Night. Captain Ptolemy, I guess that's how you say that, Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead, the sky is black, Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat as he mounts his horse to head home. Rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks, and Precinct 41 with its dome roof growing distant. Around him the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes a turn under, the, under perdition of Maine. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Thanks, kid, he thinks. He's grateful. I hope our investigation will improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too, he says quietly. I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Thank you for this, Kim. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. He puts out the stub of his cigarette and looks to the door. Man, Kim is the coolest. I love the fucking relationship we have with our partner here. It's sort of got him in the corner as if we can have more companions as we go on. But to be honest, I kind of like the lone wolf story of just, you know, our guy and Kim, Harry and Kim. The lovely, lovely duo. See you in the morning. Or are you now just going to continue following me? Oh, oh, in he goes. I wonder what would that- Can I knock on his door? I guess I can now go and go off and do shit on my own. Which would be the time where we get absolutely wasted and high and everything. But I'm not playing that kind of detective now. Then again, I feel like we're going to have horrific withdrawal symptoms if I don't. But I, I, where are we going to get him in the middle of the night? I'm sure we can. Probably from Q now. But I'm not going to fucking bother doing that. Is this our bed? Hold on, our hotel room just doesn't have a bed. Yay, that makes sense. Yeah, let's not let's not do any of that because I'm I'm so used to this ceiling fan actually murdering me. So uh, can I look in the uh, in the mirror again? Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. Okay, I can try that. Why the hell not? That's an interesting one. I didn't expect that. And I fucked it up, and we probably killed someone. <laughs>